to majority rule. This single event in Bahamian history played a significant role in shaping the modern Bahamas we experience today. The significant events leading up to and emanating from majority rule must be permanently etched in the Bahamian historical landscape as these events define us as a people, reveal what we believe in as Bahamians, and serve as a constant reminder of our vision and our values. The following is a cursory account of the significant events surrounding and leading up to majority rule, the meaning of majority rule, and homage will be duly paid to the freedom fighters that fought this epic battle in the name of freedom and justice. The Burma Road Riots Many local political historians believe that June 1, 1942, marked the beginning of the modern political history of the Bahamas. The events of the Burma Road Riots came as a result of the agitation by laborers for equal pay for equal work, regardless of color or nationality. As you know, a satellite airfield was being constructed in Western New Providence for use by the American Armed Forces. A labor dispute ensued over equal pay, and this dispute took on a life of its own and became intimately interwoven with the overall movement for freedom and social justice. Today, that site is the Linden Pindling International Airport. So it is clear that from the first stirrings of political activity in the country, labor has been an integral part of the struggle. The suffrage movement in the Bahamas. The movement really started with a conversation between Mrs. Mary Ingram and her husband following his defeat in the 1949 general elections. The defeated candidate opinioned that his political fortunes could have been very different had women voted in that election. Other significant national events that fueled the suffrage movement were the Burma Road Riots of 1942, the General Strike of 1958, and the Labor Movement of the 1950s. The Civil Rights Movement in the United States with Dr. Martin Luther King was an international event that also fanned the flames that burned for social justice and equality in the Bahamas. During the years 1959 and 1960, the movement gained considerable ground, advancing petitions and demonstrating publicly for the right to vote. In November 1960, Eugenia Lockhart and Dr. Doris Johnson accompanied Henry M. Taylor, chairman of the PLP, to London to present a petition to the Secretary of the State for the Colonies. In January 1961, a select committee of the House of Assembly gave a report in favor of the right to vote for women, but with the effect from January 1963. The PLP and the independents in the House of Assembly opposed the report. An appeal was made to the House of Commons in England again. On February 23, 1961, a bill to enable women to vote was enacted with the effect from June 30, 1962. Bahamian women voted for the first time on November 26, 1962. This new women's right brought a force and element into the history of the Bahamas that affected the country's social, economic, and political development. To this day, the effect of women exercising their right to vote has impacted all aspects of national life as women from all sides of the political divide have and continue to make their contribution to the country. The birth of the PLP. The PLP was born out of a movement that embodied the hopes, aspirations, and feelings of a generation of Bahamians who were demanding equal work, majority rule, and the freedom to pursue any hopes and wishes they dared conceive. The man who's generally credited with conceiving the Progressive Liberal Party was William Cartwright, a publisher, real estate broker, and member of the House of Assembly for Cat Island. Many black businessmen and lawyers were invited to join but for reasons of their own, decided not to be identified with the new movement. But the party's course was clear from the beginning. The PLP was designed to represent all that was opposed to unfair privileges and the wealth and power this afforded the Bay Street Boys. General Strike of 1958. In support of 1957's protests, a 16-day general strike brought Nassau to a screeching halt. Unionized or not, just about every worker participated and the strike was quite peaceful. The result was the Trade Union and Industrial Conciliation Act and the setting up of a labor department. The general strike took place on January 1958. Later that year in June, Alan Lennox Boyd, Secretary of the State of Colonies, ordered that the first constitutional steps be taken toward majority rule. The voting franchise was extended to all males, whether they were landowners or not. 
The once ambiguous unlimited plural vote was ordered to be reduced to two, and the abolition of the company vote was ordered. Black Tuesday. On this day, the governing United Bahamian Party sought the approval for a boundaries draft order, which established the boundaries for the various constituencies of New Providence and the Family Islands under the provisions of the 1964 Constitution. During a sitting of the House of Assembly, the PLP proposed two amendments to the revisions of the boundaries draft order which the UPP had presented. The amendments were designed to get a fairer idea of the number of voters and their distribution, but both proposed amendments were rejected. It was at this point that Sir Lyndon walked over to the Speaker's table and lifted the 165-year-old mace, the symbol of the Speaker's authority, and said, This is the symbol of authority, and the authority on this island belongs to the people, and the people are outside. With that, he raised the mace and hurled it through the open window of the House of Assembly. The Progressive Liberal Party describes this event as an act of defiance in the pursuit of liberty and fairness. So Tuesday the 27th of April 1965 was destined to go down in Bahamian history as Black Tuesday. Majority Rule Day Some have argued that the great significance of majority rule was that after years of struggle by many freedom and justice loving people, the back of the old oligarchy was finally broken. More importantly, majority rule presented the opportunity for real democracy to come to the Bahamas. Underpinned by equality, tolerance, economic justice, social justice, all important elements in the creation of a free, modern, democratic state. All Bahamians benefited in one way or another from the historic event that took place on January 10th, 1967, a day that now wears the rather inelegant appellation of Majority Rule Day. Majority Rule ushered in the opportunity for all Bahamians to have constitutional, political, social, cultural and economic rights. Where these rights were not readily accessible, the government of the day created laws and implemented policies to enable these entitlements. January 10th is a day in the national calendar that belongs to all Bahamians, not just PLPs, but to all Bahamians, black and white, rich and poor, young and old, city dweller and family islander, and yes, PLP and FNM alike. January 10th needs to be commemorated and celebrated by all of us because it represents one of the truly great and defining moments in our evolution as a people. With the exception of emancipation from slavery in 1834 and the attainment of independence in 1973, there is no event of more consequence and historical importance than the attainment of majority rule on January 10, 1967. January 10, 1967 represents the transition from the old Bahamas to a new Bahamas. The point of transition from minority government to majority rule. The point of transition to a modern democracy. In a hard-fought fight and competitive election in 1967, the PLP delivered 18 members to a 38-member House of Assembly. Randall Fox, who successfully ran as Labour in 1962 and 1967 with the support of the PLP, threw his support behind the PLP and became a member of the first Majority Rule Cabinet. He figured prominently in the movement toward Majority Rule. Successful independent candidate Sir Alvin Brainin threw in his lot with the PLP and accepted the post of Speaker of the House. These two warriors for justice and freedom tipped the proverbial scale in favor of the PLP and the first majority rule cabinet was formed. This distinguished group consisted of Cecil Wallace Whitfield, Milo Butler, Arthur Hanna, Clarence Bain, Jeffrey Thompson, Carlton Francis, Randall Fox, Warren Lavardi, Curtis McMillan, Clement T. Maynard, and Lyndon Pinling. As Bahamians look to the future, it must be the average man making the average salary with children to educate the university level that they see not a glass ceiling but opportunities that give rise to hope as we work to build the best little country in the world. Hello Bahamians, good evening. This is the very first time that I am speaking to you as Premier. What I said to a number of newsmen yesterday was recorded and played back for you to hear last night. But tonight, I speak to you directly, to you, my people. 
What has happened to me and my colleagues over the last 48 hours would not have happened without you. It would have been impossible without you. I therefore, on behalf of my party and I, thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Prayers surely change things. Tonight, no man can deny that we have come a long way. But I hasten to warn you that we still have a long, long way to go. The road has been hard and difficult, full of pitfalls and dangers, some put there by our friends, others by our enemies. But, thank God, we have overcome.